Right, so let's start with that top story. 13 cash in transit robberies in the past few days. 22 security officers killed, over 120 officers injured. For the people who put their lives at risk every day to move money around the country, it's becoming an increasingly dangerous job. Let's speak now to Val Bartman, CEO of the Fidelity Group. Uh, Mr. Bartman, thank you so much for joining us. We have been told that this is typical for this time of year, that we see this sort of increase as we lead towards the festive season. But in terms of what your expectations are, has it been more extreme than you expected? Good evening and, and thank you for joining me. Uh, let me join into the discussion. Definitely, I think uh, it's at a high currently. We haven't seen this um, amount of attacks in, 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 in the last three years. It, it's definitely, um, and you've mentioned the number 217 already, if you compare same period last year from the beginning year, Till now, so definitely there's a huge increase, and of course, the violence that goes with these attacks and the precision that has been uh, executed makes it makes it very difficult for us to defend. How many of your um, security personnel have have died just in the last few days? Well, uh, I think with the, with the uh, injury, we've got about 50, and mm -hmm. then. Uh, that has passed away uh, for this financial year, 16 already. So definitely, if you look at the life of our people, our staff, etc., it's we're at a point where there is no respect for life anymore. Uh, vehicles get bombed with staff in the vehicle, get shot at, and it's very, very difficult to, to prevent these robberies with these precision and the amount of attacks that are taking place. Mm. And, you know, 16 in this financial year, you, of course, are one of three of the big uh, cash movers in South Africa. Um, and, yeah, absolutely. I mean, what we're seeing is that um, despite and, and, you know, just give us some context, because there have been advances made to increase protection, obviously, for your personnel, but also for the cash you're moving in recent years. So what layers of protection do you already have? Well, uh, if you look at all the vehicles, the vehicles have all been upgraded uh, to protect our staff, of course, that, that's most important. And then, of course, the vehicles at the back, all of them are remotely open and closed. So a security officer cannot open a vehicle, and it all gets done from, from uh, our National Control and Command Center. So as we've seen, uh, explosives are freely available, um, and, and, and it get, gets used every day or almost in every attack that gets used. And, you know, even if you bought them better, uh, you still, uh, I think our truck that they bombed uh, on the weekend, they bombed it four times. And we haven't lost all the cash, but definitely, if you look at the impact and what the resources they use with the teams out there, military style, executed on our staff, mm. etc., taking out your backup vehicle, your support vehicles, etc., it is a huge concern for us as an industry and, of course, for me as a company. Yeah, absolutely. It's horrific. I was reading a parliamentary report from June 2018 talking about cash in transit heists um, and some of the issues there. They were talking about the fact that the, the vehicles were not up to standard. The vaults were not up to standard. Clearly, from what you're saying, that has been improved since then. Um, but even explosives were being used back then. Has the modus operandi become more extreme, more brutal? as you've tried to add layers of protection? Well, you know, what, what you've seen is only the, the successful uh, uh, attacks on our vehicles, but there's a lot that we defend. The, mm. the other sad part as well is they burn the vehicle, and, of course, all cash that's in that vehicle gets burned with it. So definitely um, it's a multi-volt uh, uh, vehicle that we built. As I said to you, the one on Saturday, uh, probably half of the load we, we did not lose. But... If you look at the way that they go, um, we, we deploying additional new vehicles, a new, uh, better, uh, stronger vehicle that's going to be deployed. But if you look at the cost that we as an industry incur to make sure that we secure this, we've got choppers flying every year, uh, every day. We we had the problems in the in Pumalanga area. We deployed resources, backup teams, helicopters, everything there, and then it shifts. To, to, to different areas. So it's very difficult. We deploy more than a thousand vehicles per day, oh. and to protect each and every one of them is quite difficult.
Yeah, I, I mean, it must be, uh, uh, because it's literally a moving target. Um, I want to ask, is it possible to commit these crimes without some sort of inside information? It was something that has been flagged um, as, as a problem. Uh, and whether that information comes from a bank teller or for a, from a store where money is being collected or even from um, security personnel who are being bribed. How much of a problem is that? Well, yes, there's always a possibility for internal involvement. And you've mentioned all areas where it could, can come from. But if you take some of these vehicles, they've got a specific route that they go. And I think one or two of the two vehicles that was bombed in, in the last few weeks were actually empty. There were chains and stuff on the vehicles. So there were no involvement um, because you won't go for a vehicle that hasn't got the right load on to. So definitely uh, there's a zero tolerance in the industry and especially in our business that we will not accept that we investigate all these. And yes, um, you know, the vehicle travels every day. If it needs to go to a small town, there's basically one or two routes that it can go. And that's what it's going uh, every mm. day of the week. So it is difficult. And if you observe and check and, and remember, this is a job for these syndicates. This is not. Yeah, uh, that's the, that's what they do. They specialize in it. They've got guys that are specialized in, in, in ramming the vehicle. They've got guys that are specialized in bombing the vehicle. They've got gunners that will take out uh, people that are very accurate. If you look at uh, a moving target, the vehicle traveling, how they shoot into it. One of our choppers got shot. The other day, so it is very, very military orientated and trained. What What do you think can be done? I mean, do you think that ultimately we need to look at how we move South Africa to a largely cashless society, as we're seeing other countries do, or do you think there are things that can be done that are not currently being done? I, I was looking back at this report uh, which a colleague sent me. Uh, one of the suggestions is perhaps a specialised CIT unit within the police, even specialised prosecutors to deal with CIT. What would you like to see? Well, it, it, when we went to Parliament, I think they, they got us in there and said we're not doing what we're supposed to do. But then immediately we had the support from the SAPS coming in, supporting us, and you'll see that there's been a, a huge decline in attacks. Uh, unfortunately, the support is not there. What I mean is the incident on Saturday almost took 30 minutes. Uh, nobody uh, responded to the scene. And uh, what I mean is it, it's just too dangerous to in, into that area. So definitely we need the support from government. Um, you know, uh, when the trucks were burned uh, down going to Van Rienen, to Durban, you know, military was deployed. Why can't they deploy the military to support us? This is really, if you look at the, the state of this industry and where we are now, it's crucial. You spoke about cash, cash declining. Unfortunately, cash, cash is not declining in South Africa. It's actually increasing. You look at the informal settlement in the areas. And remember, we collect all these cash at all these areas hmm. and, and, and move that to hmm. centralized points. So, so it is an increase. I, I didn't think it's quite soon that it's going to uh, disappear. Cash is part of our lives. There's a lot of it going around. And we need to manage and we need the protection and support from government to, to, to assist us in this. Yeah, and uh, it's a very interesting point you make that, uh, that you know, by all accounts, it took a good 30 minutes for the police to arrive at that N12 uh, cash and transit robbery on the weekend, which was in broad daylight, in full view of everybody. Just a final question, um, and this deals with the, with the trauma aspect. This is a dangerous job as it is. It's always known to be a dangerous job. I would imagine when you start seeing a massive increase in attacks, um, you must be dealing with an extremely anxious and traumatized workforce. How do you get them back on the road? What are you doing to help them? Well, you know, we, we try and make sure we've got people, of course, assisting uh, the injured fam families, visiting the people in the hospital, supporting them. And of course, we make sure that and then try and assure them what we're deploying. We're currently deploying in each province, I think there's about a uh, helicopter flying in some areas too every day to support them, putting up backup te teams at, at huge cost, uh, all of them in armor-plated vehicles. As we know that the one in, in one of the vehicles was shot through, so probably armor-piercing bullets uh, penetrating the vehicle. The, the security officer was shot eight times. So that is unacceptable. And, and yes, uh, the, uh, the trauma with our staff, with management, with everything, 
keeps on and that's it every day. It happens every day. The sad thing is you don't see anything of this anymore um, in the newspapers or where it's escalated. Everybody's accepted this as the norm and we cannot do that. I have to just go back and just double check. You were chatting about more support from the police. I think you mentioned the Defence Force. Are you actually calling for the Defence Force perhaps to step in and escort your vans? Well, definitely, we need any support that is possible at this stage. If you look at the amount of tax, if you look at the amount of bombings that happened, if you look at the amount of cash that disappeared, and, and of course, the lives that we lose in the, the fight against these criminals, they are syndicates, and we're not winning the war against them currently. What do you know about these syndicates? Is it clear who they are? Yes, uh, I think there, there, there's more syndicates. Uh, we, we've seen the police had that great success in, uh, in, in, in the Limpopo area some time ago. But there are many syndicates. They are well organized um, and they work from certain areas. We've got, of course, intelligence, COVID, overt operations uh, that's, uh, that, 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 that's out there that tells us about info. But remember, we also need the police support to assist us in this. And I think if you look at the Nelspreet incident where we were involved, where we defended the attack and, and some of the robbers were, were arrested, they are out in 5,000 rand bail. How can that work? Yeah. And, and, and probably I think some of the information is that some of those guys are involved with the, with the bombing on Saturday. Yeah, it's an excellent point. You let someone out on bail who is part of a syndicate, a specialized syndicate that knows how to bomb a cash and transit vehicle, they can go straight back to work and just disappear. All right. Um, thank you so much for speaking to us. Much appreciated. That was Val Bartman. He's the CEO of the Fidelity Group, one of the big three cash in transit companies. He's told us that 16 security personnel on their employ, in their employ, has been murdered uh, in the line of duty this financial year. And he's calling for more police support, even the army support, um, because these attacks are increasingly brutal um, and they don't look like they're stopping any time soon. Well